What's up, guys? My name is Michael, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to go over this leak, uh, not leak code, <laughs> my bad, Code Forces 631B, okay? It's Draymond likes permutations. So you're given a sequence M integers, and uh, it's called a permutation if it contains all the integers from 1 to M out exactly once. Number M is called the length of the permutation. So they have, he ha so Draymond has two permutations, uh, both have length L1 and L2, and then he concatenates these two. Okay, he adds them both uh, permutations L1 plus L2. So first L1 elements of A is a permutation of P, P1 and L2 is a, uh, A is permutation P2. So now you're given a sequence A and you need to find two permutations L1 and L2, uh, uh, find the two permutations L1 and L2. If there are several possible ways to restore them, you should find all of them. Okay, so basically the problem statement just wants us to split into two permutations such that uh, all it would contain all the values on uh, from the left side is going to contain all the values from one up to uh, the length of the permutation on the left side, and all the values from on the right side going to take contain the values of one to the uh, other side of the the length of the array. Okay, so that's basically what they want us to do, and then we have to print uh, each of those uh, if there's different multiple possible ways of doing it. So I'm going to show you what I mean on pen and paper, and then then after that I'm going to show you the code. All right. All right, guys, so I'm going to explain to you guys how to do this problem where uh, you're trying to split the, the, the array into two parts where two permutations and uh, one, each of them, well, there are several ways to store them or you have to restore them all. And each permutation has to have contain all the integers from one to M at least once. Okay, so we're trying to split these the two arrays. So if you look at this, look at the first test case. The answer is one, one, four, or four, one. So, and the reason why is because if I split, uh, let's look at four, one first. Okay, let's look at four, one first. So let, let's look at four, one, and then one, four. All right, four, one, four. Let's look at four, one first. Reason why is because if I would split at four, right, all the values from here to here contain one to four, right? One to four. And then all the values of here, from one to n contain all the values from one to one, right? So the re so the, in order to if you th think closely, the we're trying to split the array into two parts such that all the values contained between from one up until the length of uh, where we're splitting, and the one from the other one is uh, it has to contain all the values from one to the length of where we're splitting also. So if we look at here one to four, if we uh, the reason why it's uh, four one. The reason why it's four one is because if you're splitting from four, all the values from one to f uh, from here to here up to four. The four four has the values one to four, and the ones after has the values one to one. And the reason why uh, one four works in the first case, because uh, let's say I'm splitting from here, all the values from one to one are in the first array. And all the values from four afterward, from one to, uh, from four a from four afterward, right? They contain all the values from of uh, m of one to four. Okay, so that's the reason why these two, these two, uh, these two, uh, these two numbers work, right? These positions that we're splitting at work. Okay, so now let's look at this 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 input statement. Reason why this works is because if I'm split at four. Right, let's like cut this right here. All the values from here to here contain numbers from one to four, and all the values from here to here contains numbers one to two. Right, so that's how you. That's how this problem is. That's how this problem statement works. Okay, so now if you realize this, is that the only way? So I'm trying to split into two arrays. Right, the only way this could possibly work is if. At least one of them is going to be the maximum, right? The maximum, right? If I were to go through uh, the the first array, right? If I were to go through all the values in this array, let's say I go through all the values here in this array, and I'm going to split at some some position, right? We have to know is that it has to contain all the values from one up to the maximum number, okay? That's the only way this could possibly work for any of these arrays, right? If it doesn't contain one up to the maximum number, 
it probably, it can't work. It absolutely cannot work, okay? So if you look at this, here, here, this is the maximum of four, right? You are, we are able to split this from the numbers from one to four at position four is because all the values from here to here contain up from one to the maximum, which is four, okay? So that's how this, this array works. That's how this algorithm works. It has to either, from the left side, left side has to contain all the values from one to the maximum, and the and let's look at the right side. The right side has to contain all the values from one to the, uh, so left side contains all the values from one to the maximum, right? So here, this is the maximum. Let's, let's say this is the maximum. The right side has to contain for n minus the maximum. Okay, so it's the leftover values. That's the reason why it has to contain it. So if, um, Let's say there's a one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six numbers, right? The left side has to contain all the values from one to the maximum, which is a four, one to four. Then the right side, what is six minus four? Six minus four is two. So the right side has to contain all the values from one to two, okay? So here, that's how we do this algorithm, okay? There's two scenarios. The first scenario is that the left side contains all the values from two to the max. Then the right side of uh, one to the max, the right side has to contain all the values from one to n minus max, where n is the total number of numbers, number, number of total numbers. Okay. It's the length of the array. This is the second case, right? As we saw in the above in the second case is when the left side contains one to n minus max and the right side contains values from one to max, okay? So these are the two, uh, this is the left side and this is the right side. Those are the two scenarios that could actually possible happen in this, in this, uh, in this problem, okay? Because we are only splitting up to two arrays, right? And because of these two arrays, the only possible permutation that works is if it contains one to the max on the left side or the right side contains a n, n, uh, one to the n minus max. So how do we check? How do we check that all the values on the left side contain one, one to the max, and all the values on the right side contain one to n minus max? Well, you could literally just create a, you could use an, uh, you could use a map, a hash map or an array, and literally just have, for every index that is in that array, from one to max, set them all as false, and then loop through here to here, uh, from here to the, uh, for the left side, one to the uh, max, and check uh, whichever one that is, occurs there, you're gonna set that as true, and whichever that doesn't occur there, set that as false, and then in the end, you should be able to get the the uh, ones that, uh, you should be able to check if they all contain the values from one to max. And I'll go over the code right now with you guys. All right guys, so I'm gonna explain the code now, how the code works to you guys, okay? So first of all, what did I do first? Um, from first of all, I had to read in the test cases Q T, and I, of course you have to read in the test cases T. Then I had to read in the, the length of the array to read in the values of the length of the array, and yeah, I had to do that. I had to create my array, and what did I use? I use a set, and the reason why I use a set is just, is just to avoid duplicate values. Okay, uh, I don't think it really matters if you use a set or not, but I did it use a set. I used a set, and then I used a pair to add the two lengths. The two lengths that we have to have, okay? The two lengths that we have to have. So this set is going to contain uh, two of the pairs, which is like going to be this set is going to have all the values of the two pairs that are going to have the left side, the length of the left side, and the length of the right side, okay? So that's what this set is going to contain. I'm going to have a value of max number. So what did I do? First, I read in all my um, all the values in my of the array first, because that's well, you had to do that. Like, there's no other way to do that, right? Then I had to get the maximum number. So I got the maximum number by calling uh, the max function and I get uh, compare every single element uh, of um, that I'm reading in with this max number. So I got get the max, the, the maximum possible number from the array, the max number, from the array. And then I had to pass it in, okay? So I passed in the max number into this function and then I'm gonna pass in uh, the array, okay? Uh, I didn't really have to do that this to pass in the array you probably could make the array a global variable but I had I did that anyway just cuz alright so 
once I pass in the, the number and then the array, what do I do? I had to first create a map to check the first part. So for that, I kept track the number of occurrences of every single number uh, in the first part, right? From one to uh, one to the maximum number, right? So I had to do that. So here first, uh, I kept track of the, I went through, I looped through the array again, and then I kept track of the, uh, every single number of occurrences. Okay, that's what I did. Then after that, I uh, looped through from, yeah, yeah, wait, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, so here, this array, this for loop loops from zero up to the maximum number, right? Like the maximum number we that we got on the first part in before. We got the maximum number of the, the total max number of the array, right? The maximum value, the total max value of the array. So I loop from zero to the total max value of the array, which is that position of the maximal value that we're splitting at. And then I count the number of occurrences of that, of each value. I count the number of occurrences of each value. After that, I loop from one to the maximum number of array again, and I have to check that I have seen every of them. I had to see every single value once, okay? So if I saw zero, if I saw zero values, right, I return false, okay? I had to see it at just once. I had to see it once, okay? All right. Then, then after that, I had to check the rest of the array. I have to check the rest of the rest of the the rest of the array, okay? So the rest of the array, I had to I created a separate map which uh, checks the number, accounts the number of occurrences from after, from that position after to the right side that I'm splitting, right? And to the right side, I just kept track of the number of occurrences by doing a check second part plus plus, okay, of D of I plus plus, okay? Now, I had to make sure that I count all of them once, okay? I had to count them all at once, okay? So from here here on forward, I looped again, and I'm gonna loop from one up to the um, N minus the maximum number, N minus the maximum number, okay? And I basically had to check, make sure that the number of occurrences, this part, check part second part at I, is has to be, uh, if it's zero, then I return false, right? It has to be one. From right side, it has to be one, okay? Then that means, uh, yeah. From the right side, it has to be, the number of occurrences for each element has to be one, right? Because if it equals zero, I return false. So then after that, after this whole thing, I return true if uh, if I passed, if, if both of these case, cases I passed, right? Like I never return false, and I'm gonna return true. Okay, so then after, if this, if, the, if it does, uh, if the check works, right, for a maximum number, from a zero to the max number, right, then I insert in my set maximum number and then n minus maximum number. If it does, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I do. Then I check from, I have to check the other way also, right? Uh, remember, there was two cases. There's a one to max number, and then the left side can also have a one to n minus max. So I had to check that also. So I checked the left side of n minus max, and then I do the same thing. Uh, if it works, then I'm gonna uh, do n minus maximum number. I, I add n minus maximum number for the left side, for the left pair, and then the right side, I'm gonna do add maximum number, okay? Then after that, I just print out the size of my set, and then I go through every single pair, and I print them out. And yeah, that's what I did to get accepted. So that's how you do this problem. Um, you could, you, there's multiple ways you could do it. You, instead of using a map, I use the map. You probably could use a simple array and just like making sure all the values are zero or one, right? You could use a, I don't know, you could use a bit set actually. You could you could technically use a bit set. All right, uh, you, you just have to make sure that, it, that where you're splitting has to contain all the values from one up to that, for one up to that number, right? For the left side and, and the right side. So yeah, that's all you have to do for this problem. Rate, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys understand this problem. I hope I explained it to you guys. And yeah, I'll check you guys later. Peace.